Thanks for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to discuss a subject that has been on my heart a lot lately, a subject that was not in the original outline for this series, namely the nation of Russia, which is clearly on the move and I believe coming into her prophetic place as discussed in Ezekiel 38 and 39. When communism fell in Russia in 1991, there was a prophecy being noised abroad that Russia would only be open for a season and then it would close back up. The church was to quickly advance. Mike Bickle sent in a million Bibles. Rick Renner established a church first in Kiev and then in Moscow. Missionaries flooded the former Soviet Union. Today, Russia is closing back down under the iron fist of Vladimir Putin. Stay tuned. Welcome to Understanding the End of the Age with Teresa Garcia. The world has entered into a time of paradigm shift when everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Signs and wonders, miracles and healings attest to this truth. It is the time of the coming of the Lord. Join Teresa as we discuss how to prepare our hearts and loved ones in understanding the end of the age. I'm Teresa Garcia and I want to thank you for joining me again this week as we continue in our series, Timeline to the End of Time, and its implications specifically for Russia as well as America, Europe, Israel, and the end time world. Heavenly Father, we pray especially for those people in the former Soviet Union, many of whom feel threatened now. We pray for a mighty harvest into those, the kingdom from those nations right now, and especially also for the Russian and Iranian troops who will be the paratroopers going into Israel. We pray that many will be born again before this event. In Jesus' name, amen. I do write actually a little bit about Russia in the book From the Hidden on page 139. I say this, although Russia is not one of the seven enemies of Israel, ancient enemies, who are they? In uh, Revelation 12, verse 3, Satan has seven heads. Those are, most scholars agree, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, and revived Rome. So even though Russia is not one of those seven ancient enemies, historically, Russia's record against Israel has been abysmal. Under the Tsars in the 1800s, there were many pogroms, which is they would ride into the Jewish village, rape the women, murder everybody, and steal their goods. Beginning in 1881, Jews were herded into Russian ghettos. After the communists took over in 1917, the Jews were trapped in this hostile land. When the Jewish state was founded, the Russian Jews wanted to go home, but the communists wouldn't allow it. So now we're going to talk about Gog, G-O-G. Uh, we know from last week's show and from reading Ezekiel 38 that there is a demonic prince by the name of Gog that rules over Russia. And I'm reading now from Billy Brim's School of Eschatology, the study of Ezekiel. And she's talking here about that demon prince, Gog, G-O-G, and here's who she thinks it is, Billy Brim. I believe Gog is Satan, who has always been against God's plans concerning Israel. The Sitra Akra, the adversary. The Sitra Akra is one of the names the Jews have given to Satan. Where do they get that? Remember how Moses drew a line at the time of the golden calf and he said, Who is on the Lord's side? Come over here. This word, Sitra Akra, means the other side. So here's the point. Possibly, and the more I study, the more I would say probably, Gog is actually Satan. In any event, Russia has had a very anti-Semitic history as well as a very bloodthirsty political lineage. So we're going to begin 
by looking at Russia in the 1500s. This was under uh, Ivan the Terrible. He's called Tsar Ivan. He ruled in the 1500s and he ordered Jews at one point to either convert to the Greek Orthodox faith or be drowned in the river or burned at the stake. Ivan the Terrible was also noted for developing a national and central political secret police force he called the Guard, which ruled through terror and controlled the government. This type of ruling police body has persisted throughout Russian history. Let's listen to Wikipedia. The revolution of Tsar Ivan was an attempt to elevate the men among the gentry to positions of power, thus suppressing the aristocracy that failed to support him. Ivan successfully cemented and centralized the government and thereby also a centralized apparatus of political control in the form of his own guard, or we would say secret police. The idea of a guard as a means of political control became so ingrained in Russian history that it can be traced to Peter the Great, Vladimir Lenin, Joseph Stalin, who placed the political police over the party, Tsar Ivan's monstrous invention, that is, the guard, has thus dominated the entire course of Russian history. And we know in the 20th century it was called the KGB, and Vladimir Putin was the head of the KGB, and now that he's come back into power, he has changed its name. It is now called the FSB. Going back to Ivan for just a minute, he groomed his second son, also named Ivan, to be his heir. Both were bloodthirsty tyrants. At one point, father and son spent five weeks watching the citizens of Novgorod being slaughtered in war. In the evening, they retired to a church for prayer. Let's take a look at father and son. Ivan the Terrible killed his son Ivan when the young man was 27. He struck him with his scepter during an argument. The boy lay dying for three days. The father prayed for a miracle to no avail. Now let's switch gears and talk about Russia in the modern era. In March, we all know they took over the Crimea. Uh, Crimean Peninsula, and we know they will try to conquer Israel. Uh, as we uh, record this show, we don't know whether they're going to take over the Ukraine. And so in a recent speech, Condoleezza Rice, who is the former Secretary of State under George Bush, asked this question, why is Russia so emboldened? And then she quotes Ronald Reagan. As Ronald Reagan said, peace only comes through strength. Our defense budget is decreased every year, and recently in March, a couple of weeks before the Russians invaded Crimea, we announced that we are going to have a, an army smaller than any army since before uh, World War II. And Condoleezza Rice says, we cannot afford to be war weary. We have dismantled our space program. If we want to send a man in space, we have to pay the Russians to take us. We couldn't even defend our ambassador in Benghazi. Let's listen to a few presidential quotes uh, comparing what President Reagan said to the presidents of the 21st century. President Reagan, they, meaning the Russians, preach the supremacy of the state, declare its omnipotence over individual man, and predict its eventual, eventual domination of all peoples on the earth. They are the focus of evil in the modern world. 
So in your discussions of a nuclear freeze proposal, I urge you to beware of the temptation of pride, the temptation to blithely declare yourselves above it all and label both sides equally at fault, to ignore the facts of history and the aggressive impulses of an evil empire, to simply call the arms race a giant misunderstanding and thereby remove yourself from the struggle between right and wrong, good and evil. In other words, President Reagan understood that Russia is the evil empire. Now let's listen to some modern presents presidents in the 21st century. George W. Bush, referring to Vladimir Putin, said, quote, I looked the man in the eye. I found him to be very straightforward and trustworthy, and we had a good dialogue. I was able to get a sense of his soul. Then President Obama this is in 2012 to Dmitry Medvedev, who is the second in command. He thought he was speaking privately, but his microphone was open. This is my last election. After my election, I have more flexibility, presumably to dismantle missile defense in Europe. Dmitry Medvedev replied, I understand I will transmit this information to Vladimir. So unfortunately, our 21st century presidents have never been able to grasp what President Reagan understood. This is an evil empire. Now, to his credit, Mitt Romney did say that in the 2012 debate, but he was laughed to scorn by the news media, many of whom are socialists themselves. Therefore, today we have Russia on the move under Vladimir Putin, who I believe will be the one who rules Russia throughout the tribulation. So what role will Russia play in the tribulation? Russia will be an ally of the Antichrist. Remember, it is the Antichrist who brokers the peace treaty of Daniel 927. Let's listen to Mike Bickle discussing the end time, revived Roman Empire, and Russia. He says, it will touch the whole world. It won't conquer the whole world. It will be based in Europe and Russia, mostly in Europe. It will be horrendously evil. It will strike terror. It is the man of sin himself leading this empire. But remember, Mr. Putin is not the Antichrist. The Antichrist must be an Assyrian to fulfill a biblical prophecy. Now we're going to go to the 1940s to the evil work of the Russian demonic prince Gog in the days of Stalin. And I am reading a book called Disinformation by Lieutenant General Ion Pachapa. He is a Romanian who fled to the United States. Uh, he is now using his second false identity, uh, hiding in the United States. He's in his 80s now, and he had or has a $2 million price on his head. He's the highest ranking Romanian and communist from Romania to ever defect to the United States. And he makes the point that there is a difference between misinformation which is really government propaganda, probably everybody does it, and disinformation. And he says this about disinformation. The absolute worst damage done to the free world has been caused by the Kremlin's disinformation operations, which were designed to change the past. He gives some examples. Stalin, he was a political killer who slaughtered 20 million people, but they've made him into a political god. Uh, Marxism, which is a brutal regime, but today we know many countries have Marxist leaders because they have, through disinformation, made it look appealing. So let's listen to a definition of disinformation. 
Unlike traditional propaganda techniques designed to engage emotional support, disinformation is designed to manipulate the audience at the rational level by supporting false conclusions. A common disinformation tactic is to mix some truth and observation with false conclusions and lies. And I'm going to give you another example of disinformation. Uh, this is probably one of the most compelling examples in the entire book, and that is Pope Pius XII. He was pope during World War II. After the war, Stalin ordered a disinformation campaign against Pope Pius XII. And I'm sorry to tell you that I personally believe the disinformation because I thought he was soft on Nazis. But that is incorrect. That is Soviet disinformation. The author here gives page after page and chapter after chapter of all the heroic things Pope Pius did, including opening his personal villa, his summer home, to the Jews during the war and using his personal bedroom as a birthing room for over 40 Jewish babies. So what does the Word of God have to say about serial liars? Let's listen. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, some of you might be thinking, gee, Teresa, this is pretty depressing today. You sound like the future is going to be terrible. Well, I'm sorry to tell you that's true. Daniel said it will be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. But the good news is you don't have to be here for that. And if you have never made Jesus the Lord of your life, he promises many times that we are not appointed to wrath. He says in Luke 21, 36, Watch therefore and pray always that you will be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. So I would urge you, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, would you bow your head and pray with me right now and say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin and cleanse me. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you're coming back again. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and power. I'm saved, I'm born again, and I'm on my way to heaven because now Jesus lives in me. And if you just prayed with me, you could write or call or call somebody, tell them, I just prayed with that lady. I am a Christian. Christianity is not a one-time thing. It is a life's walk. What do you do next? Here are some suggestions. One, find a good church where the Bible is believed to be true and the Holy Spirit is honored and go regularly. Two, pray to the Father every day in the name of Jesus. He will answer your secret prayer and that's how you'll know he is the one true God. Get yourself a Bible you can understand and read it every day. We use the King James Version on this show and if you have not been water baptized since you made your commitment to Christ, plan to be water baptized to seal your commitment to the Lord. Let's return for a minute to uh, General Lieutenant General Pachapa's book, Disinformation. And uh, we're going to discuss uh, a fraudulent and evil document called the Protocols of the elders of Zion. And so uh, in the late 1800s, Tsar Alexander III decided that he wanted everybody in Russia to have the same religion. And so uh, 
then Jews would have to convert. And so in order to persuade them, you might say, or or either persuade his soldiers to murder the Jews, they developed something called the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. So this was a form of disinformation, and what they did, they took a French play from the middle 1800s called Dialogues in Hell, and in the play, Napoleon III uh, was accused of wanting to dominate uh, France. But they changed Napoleon III to the Jews, and they changed from France to the world. And so what it says is that the Jews are trying to seize power throughout the whole world. Now let's find out what American helped to further this evil set of documents. The Protocols of the Elders of Zion is an anti-Semitic hoax purporting to describe a Jewish plan for global domination. It was first published in Russia in 1903, translated into multiple languages and disseminated internationally in the early part of the 20th century. Henry Ford funded printing of 50,000 copies that were distributed throughout the United States in the 1920s. And so some scholars believe this was the basis for Hitler persuading the people the Holocaust was all right. Adolf Hitler and the Nazis publicized the text as though it were a valid document, although it had already been exposed as fraudulent after the Nazi party came to power. In 1933, it ordered the text to be studied in German classrooms. The historian Norman Cohn suggested that Hitler use the protocols as his primary justification for initiating the Holocaust. Now, uh, what happened in 1972 then is that the KGB had this thing uh, translated into Arabic, and they, then they sent out thousands of agents with hundreds of thousands of copies of this disinformation into the Islamic world. And so, uh, unfortunately then, uh, all, uh, this, this evil document is one of the things that the Muslims use today in their fear that Israel is going to try to rule the world. Let's listen. Governments or political leaders in most parts of the world have not referred to the protocols since World War II. The exception to this is the Middle East, where a large number of Arab and Muslim regimes and leaders have endorsed them as authentic, including endorsements from Presidents Nasser and Sadat of Egypt, King Faisal of Saudi Arabia, and Colonel Muammar Gaddafi of Libya. The 1988 Charter of Hamas, a Palestinian Islamist terrorist group, states that the Protocols of the Elders of Zion embodies the plan of the Zionists. So what is the truth about the Jews? Well, I did a little bit of research. The Jews comprise less than 1% of the world's population, and yet they have won over 22% of the Nobel Prizes. Some of their con contributions include Jonas Salk was a Jew, first polio vaccine, Albert Sabin, first oral polio vaccine, Maria Meyer, identified the structure of the atomic nuclei. Christopher Columbus discovered America. Isaac Singer invented the sewing machine. Jo Joseph Pulitzer established the Pulitzer Prize. The most influential men in history are said to be Moses, Jesus, Marx, Freud, and Einstein. And of course, all of them are Jewish. Stay tuned and we will be right back. 
Teresa's 10-part DVD series, The Man of Sin, is now available for only $27. This includes shipping and handling. Using both the Old and New Testaments, Teresa explains the geographic area from which the Antichrist will come, who he will attack militarily, and how he will deceive the world. Will he come back from the dead? What is the abomination of desolation? Which nations produce the Ten Kings? Who destroys Rome mid-tribulation? And why? The answers are in Teresa's 10-part DVD series, The Man of Sin. This series includes the 10-part DVD series, The Man of Sin, hard copies of charts, quotes, and prophecies used on the screen, the pamphlet Honor the Blood, and Teresa's essays, Inevitability of the Third Temple, and Israel's Covenant with Death and Hell. Send $27 to Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236, or call 618-281-3291. We take Visa and MasterCard, or order online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com. If you would also like a copy of Teresa's book from the Hidden Final Edition for only $12, $4 off the regular price, send $39 to Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494 Columbia, Illinois 62236 or call 618 281 3291 or order online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com. And thank you for including your tax deductible donation when you order. September 11th, 1999. This day began the year that everything changed and the beginning of the final judgment of the nations. In this series, Timeline to the End of Time, Teresa walks through the end times and reveals the catastrophic naval attack on Damascus in the book of Jeremiah, the hook in the jaw that pulls the Russians into Israel, the war machine that Antichrist uses to unite Shia and Sunni Muslims. To order the eight-part DVD series, Timeline to the End of Time, for only $35, including the notebook with charts and timelines used on the screen, send $35 to Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236 or call 618-281-3291 or order online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com. This series refers frequently to the book from the Hidden Final Edition. And if you're planning to use this series in your Bible school or cell group, it's recommended that you also purchase the book from the Hidden Final Edition on sale for $12. To order both the DVD series, Timeline to the End of Time, and the book from the Hidden Final Edition, send $47 to Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236. Or call 618-281-3291 or order online at Teresa Garcia Ministry. Street.com. And thank you for including your tax-deductible donation when you order. Next week we will look at some good news, the great harvest at the end of the age. Do pray for the peace of Jerusalem and we will see you again next week. Thank you for watching Understanding the End of the Age with Teresa Garcia. You may contact us at Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236. Or call 618-281-3291. Or visit us online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com. You may also find us on Facebook and Roku at Teresa Garcia Ministry. For prayer requests, call 618-281-3291 or mail them to us at Teresa Garcia, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236. Be sure to join us again next week for Understanding the End of the Age with Teresa Garcia.